Hi, GD class. How's everyone doing? Um, we have an episode here with uh, your teacher, Itri, and uh, we're going to uh, start our um, science uh, today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, something that's very important and very common on the JD science test, which is chemical reactions. So our um, obviously GD science um, contains a lot of reading as uh, we've talked about uh, in the beginning of our class uh, that um, aside from the math, everything else is based on reading. And so the science is a lot of charts, a lot of tables, a lot of, uh, you know, comprehension material, uh, but the most important part is understanding what we're reading, right? And so chemical reactions are very uh, important. And I would like to demonstrate something here before I show you some official chemical reactions. And then um, you can try and make uh, best sense out of it. So, so basically uh, a chemical reaction Unlike a physical reaction, so we have actually two types of reactions. We have chemical reactions and we have physical reactions. Now, a physical reaction, um, it's only a, a change in the, uh, let's say, appearance, right? So you're wearing like a, a new shirt. It's still you. You're just changing your shirt uh, or um, you are obviously... Um, you know, not changing the interior, uh, but the rather the exterior of something, right? A chemical reaction that changes fully the composition of what something uh, is made out of, right? So basically, they look like this. You have a chemical added to another chemical, and then instead of an equal sign, you have a little arrow which represents the reaction. And then on the other side, you have some other components. So the arrow represents the reaction. So we know it went through. Uh, sometimes reactions do not go through, right? You, you are uh, putting, let's say, water and oil together and you hope for something that happens and guess what? The water and the oil don't mix. So there's no reaction. Sometimes there isn't any reaction, right? So if the reaction goes through, these chemicals that you see on the left, we are calling them uh, reactants. These are the ones that we react together. The chemicals on the right, we are going to be calling them products. So this is what it's being produced. So we have a chemical reaction. We have some reactants. You mix them together. Reaction goes through we have some product. So this is the symbol of a chemical reaction. So no need to panic. We just have to be familiar with it. Now, what is truly happening is that what truly is happening is, think of it as, as a container. So let's say you have a container with the chemical B, and then you have a chemical A that you're adding inside the container, and then you mix it, right? So that's what A plus B represents. It represents pretty much the mixing of the two together. And then after you mix it, maybe now you take another look and then what you have, it's another chemical. C. it's a different chemical. So that would be your product. So the reactants in here, the reactants would be A and B. So A and B are both reactants. C is your product. So these two reactants combine together, they react to create this product. You might say, how can two reactants make one product? How's that possible? It's easy to do that. Take some salt, add it to water. And then when you mix them together, you only get one thing. You get a glass of salt water or salty water. But it's one thing, the salt and the water mix together. Yes, they can, unlike the oil and the water. And then they create something called salt water. So some reactions 
go through, some do not go through. Some reactions are with two reactants, they give you one product and others have multiple reactants with multiple products. One very important reaction that we need to know for our GD, and again, I repeat, we need to know it, is the reaction of life. In other words, the reaction of photosynthesis. It's the way the light creates oxygen on our planet, right? That's why we need the oxygen to survive. So we call this the reaction of photosynthesis. <clears throat> How does that work? Well, let's draw it and then we'll write the reaction and then we'll try to see what's going on, right? So obviously we have something that we call light, right? Or light particle. Uh, another word for this is we call it a photon. So light particle or photon comes in, reacts with oxygen, and then the product is two things. We get water plus we also get something called carbon dioxide. So this is the reaction of photosynthesis, a light particle or a photon um, comes in, reacts with oxygen and produces water and carbon dioxide. Have you guys noticed how much water is on earth? A lot of water. In fact, 75% of earth is covered in water. Uh, we know more about the moon than the oceans inside our earth because there's so much, right? Especially when you go in the bottom of the oceans. Now, how does this reaction look with chemicals? It looks like this, C6H12O6. It's actually the chemical for a photon plus O2, which is the oxygen. And we get CO2 plus H2O. This reaction right here is a must. We need to know it for our GD science test. It's the photosynthesis reaction. So this is our uh, photon right here, our energy molecule. This is your oxygen. And then we have our carbon dioxide, as we said, that's why it's CO2. And then we have our <clears throat> water. Now, we're going to go into something else and then come back to this to conclude our video because Einstein said, one of our greatest scientists of all times, that energy is conserved, meaning it stays the same. It doesn't get lost. You can't lose it. He also said that energy is neither created nor destroyed. You can't just make something out of nothing. You need to have something to make something else. It's a chemical reaction. You cannot make something out of nothing, right? That nothing is something. That is why you were able to make something else. That's why we don't believe in magic if we uh, are in science, right? Because we know uh, that there's something there, you know? So the rabbit that comes out of the hat has been already in the hat. You know, you can't just make a rabbit automatically come out of the hat if the hat is empty. You know, if the hat's empty, then it's empty. It's made out of air. So, so with that said, we need to do something that it's called balance. We need to balance our chemical reactions. Whatever we have on one side, we should have on the other side, just like we do with our uh, linear equations, with our algebra. We multiply both sides of the equation by the same number. We divide both sides of the equation by the same number. We add both sides of the equation the same number. We subtract both sides of the equation, the same number. So we want to do the same thing in here. So we're going to take a look at this at the end of our video here. So the next thing I want to share is 
a little sheet here that has equations and the questions are going to be to balance this chemical equations, right? So what they're gonna do is they're gonna give us a little spot on the exam right here where we can put some numbers, right? We can put number one, two, three, four, five, usually they're whole numbers that we can balance. Whatever we have on the left, we should have on the right. So that is our goal. So how do we do it? By taking a look at what we have, right? So uh, for example, in our first equation right here, we have this N, there's two of them. We have this H, there's two of them. By the way, N is nitrogen, H is hydrogen. And then we have this thing right here where there's three H's and one N. So maybe if I put a two right here, that means I have N, H, three, and another N, H, three. Two of those, two NH threes, which means you have two Ns and six Hs if you count them separately. There's gonna be two Ns and six Hs. Okay, now let's go to the left of the equation, which is this arrow right here. Let's go to the left side, right? What are we gonna put here and what are we gonna put there? Okay, well. I feel like the nitrogens are okay. We have two on the right side. So I'm gonna put a one here because one times two, it's another two. So no worries there. But what about the hydrogen? There's six of them. So if I put a three here, three times two would give me a six. So it's not as easy as it seems, right? So that means I have to put a one in front of the nitrogen, a three in front of the hydrogen, because I wanted to make sure that on both sides, we have the same amount of chemicals. Now, how can you verify this? You can draw like I'm doing here. You can say there's two ends here, and then there's H2, three of them, so there's six all together. And then here you have NH3 and another NH3, which means again, two Ns and six Hs. So that's how you balance this chemical equation. Next equation up here, we have this KClO3. KCl and O2, we would like to balance. Now we take a look at the K, both sides, one each, we're good. Let's take a look at the CL, both sides, one each. We're good. So what is the problem? The problem is that I have two oxygens right here and I have three oxygens right there. How can I make a two and a three together equal, right? If you think about from multiplication table, two times three is equal to six. So maybe if I multiply this by two and I multiply this by three, that might work. Give it a try. Let's see now. Are you going to have six oxygens? Yes, because here I have O2 and another O2 and another O2. So there's six of them. Here I have KClO3 and another KClO3. So there's six of them. Now, as far as the K and the Cl, well, there's two there. So you want to put a two in front. So when you balance chemical equations, it's the same thing as the equations that you do in algebra. You try to keep the same thing left and right. But in chemistry, they're a little more challenging because there's multiple chemicals introduced into the chemical uh, reaction. And let's do uh, one more in here just to do a little more extra practice. Uh, so here we have Na and we have Na on the right side. So this is the equal sign, the arrow. Uh, F2, this is only one F. So I'm going to put a two right here. And then Cl here has two. This Cl is only one. So, you know, nothing to do here, but to put a little two in front to make sure the Cls are two. And then what do we do with the remaining ones? Because we, we don't have anything, we put a one, that's like an invisible number there that we just throw in front. 
if we take a look at this, we have two NAs, two NAs, two CLs on the left, two Fs on the left, two CLs on the, on the right, two Fs on the right. So we were able to balance this chemical uh, reaction here. So, okay, now let's take a final look at our water creation, right? So we know water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen. Let us see now if we can put this together. So the water molecule is H2O. So water actually looks like this. You have an, you have an O in here, and then you have two H's connected to the oxygen. That's like a, the uh, 3D, if you want to say, molecule of water, right? It looks like a little angle, not a triangle. It's not connected. It's like an angle like this. So there's a particle of oxygen right in the middle, and there's a couple of hydrogens left and right. So here we have two hydrogens, and here we have two oxygens, but here we have one oxygen. So we have a dilemma there. What can we do? Well, maybe if we put a two here, now there's two waters. And once we have two waters, the oxygens are good, so I can put a one here. But the hydrogens, I have one, two, three, four. So the only way to fix this is to put a two in front of this hydrogen. So if I put a two in front of the hydrogen, one in front of the oxygen, and two in front of the water molecule, I am able to balance the chemical reaction that produces the water. A little challenging, but again, I just wanted to jumpstart you guys on this topic and then try to do a lot of practice problems on your iPathways account, and then we'll get back to this one again. Now, with that in mind, I wanna go back to our photosynthesis reaction because we truly wanted to take a better look at this and balance it, right? So we said the photosynthesis reaction, the, the reaction of life had C6H12O6 plus O2, oxygen gives us CO2 plus H2O. And we wanted to balance this, right? We want to balance this because they might ask us, they might ask us how many molecules, how many photons do we have, right? So the easiest way to do this is to take a look how the carbon is six. There's six carbons on the left. So I think I'm going to put a six in front of this carbon here on the right. And I'm gonna draw a line here so you know, this is your left side and this is your right side. So those are the two sides of the chemical equations, right? So you get to actually balance this by taking a look at the quantity that you have on the left and the quantity that you have on the right. So six carbons on both sides. Now we took care of the carbons. Let's take a look at the hydrogens now. Hydrogens, I have 12 here. So I have two here. So if I put a six, six times two is 12. So I took care of that. Now let's take a look at the oxygens. Now the oxygens are a little tricky because it's six times two. So I have 12 here. And then six times one, I have six here. So when I add those two together, I have 18. So 18. So now that I have a two here, if I put a six here, I will get 12 from here and another six from there, which will be 18. So now it's fully balanced. We can put one right here and it's a one photon for six oxygens to produce six carbon dioxides and six water. So that's how we're gonna interpret this. If somebody asks you, how do you interpret this uh, reaction? The interpretation would be that there is one photon that reacts with six oxygens. And then what we have in the products is six carbon uh, dioxides and six water molecules. So again, we started with one photon. We reacted that photon with six water, six oxygen molecules and the product is six 
carbon dioxides, and six waters. So with that said, always remember when you have a chemical reaction, right? A chemical reaction, the internal composition changes, right? So you have reactants, you have products. Whatever reacts, it's gotta be produced. They have to be balanced. You cannot have two pens on one side and three pens on the other side. If there's two pens coming in, two pens are coming out. Think of it as a pipe. Sometimes like I tell students to consider that as a pipe. So whatever goes on one end has to come out on the other end. You can throw five grams on the left and then what comes out is 20 grams. It's not an investment, right? It's not like money that grows or gets reduced. Uh, matter is neither created nor destroyed. You can make more nor you can eliminate it which means everything is around us. There's a balance. And so what we wanna know is find the balance, find how much is there on each side. Once we find that, we're good. So try to take a look at a lot of those questions from my pathways. The photosynthesis reaction is gonna be there. And next time um, we see each other, we're gonna to try to do a lot more practice reactions and then maybe talk a little more about the biology behind this and the physics uh, behind this topic. So thank you all and I will see you uh, next time. So bye, good luck.